first of all, who are you? How did you get into the art scene? So I'm Dan, or Danny. I go by, or I already go by loads of names anyways, but my art name is Ginger Dan. I uh, always used that since uni. Um, and I got into the art scene. I was, I've been working at Cass Art in Birmingham for about three years. Always been into comics, always drawing, always doing that kind of stuff. But um, literally, I got I bumped into Focke Wolf, met Focke Wolf, chatted with him, and then I was charity shopping and I bumped into him again. And he was like, Dan, why aren't you putting your stuff on stickers? And I was like, ah, oh, that's a really good idea. He's like, yeah, just fucking do it. And I was like, okay. And I really like that kind of attitude with street art, graffiti, whatever you want to call it, where it's just, just fucking do it. You just, you get your work and you just put it out there. It's that kind of like, it's, it's better to ask for forgiveness than to like beg for permission kind of thing. And I really like that about it because obviously with like all the other art avenues I've been down, it's like if you're going to be a comics artist, you've got to get a writer, you've got to get a publisher. Even if you're small press, you've got to do that kind of like connecting with other people. If you're going to be a fine artist, you've got to get into a gallery and that's a load of fucking hassle. I'd rather just be making my work. I'd rather just be drawing all the time, coming up with characters, coming up with things and being creative. It's like, it's like mainlining creativity. It's really good. And I mean, you've, you've mentioned some of your influences or at least the, the artists yeah. who inspired you to get into street art and sticker art. What other influences have you drawn from in your own style of street art and caricatures? So for my own sort of style, I guess, originally it's all comics. It's all like 2000 AD. It's all that kind of scene, so it's like Bolland, Asquera, that kind of stuff, like early stuff, constantly copying their artwork. Onto more like like more recent stuff where it's like Disraeli, it's a lot of digital artwork, there's a lot of pattern going on in there. Then obviously I moved to digital stuff. And then when I came back to Birmingham after being like away at uni and all that, I came back and I was literally just seeing gent pieces everywhere. Like I couldn't not be inspired by that too, so I took that on board and I was like, oh, how do they do that? How do they do this? Oh, it's spray paint. And then we got, at work, we got um, uh, P1, who started to work with us. He's been in Graph for like 25 years. So it's like, it's just another person that's got like loads of information and like visual references for me to like sift through and find out other people from. That's basically how I got into like the, like bringing graffiti into my style rather than it just being sort of like 2D panels. So it's that kind of like switch up that happened. Yeah. Okay, so... I mean, a lot of different artistic influences ranging yeah. from British comics, yeah. particularly science fiction comics like 2000 AD, yeah. and street art. Um, what other influences from the wider pop culture do you draw from? So, always been into punk, always been into rock, always been into that kind of like album. Like, I'm literally, my comic book romance style die. I've been an emo since like it was ever a thing. Um, that kind of like marriage of like, almost tattoo art as well, that whole thing all comes together. It's this big pop. You can just like throw things in, stir it up and then pull stuff out again. It's like, yeah, album artwork, lyrics, everything. It all comes back together and films. I fucking love anime. Like, um, I remember I was like, I must have been like 10 when I first saw Akira. And it's like, that just blew my mind. The whole thing's like hand illustrated. It's just like, every single scene is just epic. It's just, yeah. So like, pretty much everything I've looked for, I've been able to find like almost like a silver lining, a bit of influence. There's always something to take from something. Now, as someone who went away to university, came yeah. back again and dove into the street art scene, yeah. where do you think the Birmingham street art scene, or maybe the wider Midland street art yeah. scene, is here and now today? It's healthy, it's strong, there's lots of new people. I, like, I'm, I consider myself as like one of the newy, newy, new people. Newy, newy, new people? Yeah, a newy, newy, new person. Um, I'm sparkly, I'm, I've got like little bambi eyes looking around, so it's like I see new, other new people and then I see older people coming back as well. It's like uh, Tempo, I remember Tempo when I was a kid, there'd be the, like the little smiley face would be everywhere and now it's like again it's everywhere again. And then because of that I've always noticed like other sticker arts like Work One, uh, Never A Sir, um, like literally loads of other like Midlands sticker based people. You just see it all crop up and it's mm -hmm. like I think that's that's the thing I like about the Brum scene is that once you just had a little bit of it, or like the, just the Midland scene really, it's in a little bit, you see it everywhere else you go. So you could be in another city, you'd be in Manchester, and you'd be like, oh, there's a Work One sticker. Oh, there's a Never a Sir. Oh, you know, you just, you just start clocking it around. It's a very welcoming scene for yeah. you and young artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It? I've yeah. never had anyone be like, oh, what are you doing? No one's ever said that to me while I've been painting or sticking. Everyone's always been really like, oh, 
you do those demons, right? And I'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's me. Do you think the art scene in Birmingham has helped with the perception of what is graffiti and what is street art? I think it's, it's strange because in Birmingham there's this like kind of like marriage between graph and street art. So you got like, like you said earlier about Danny Mose, that Mose does like letters, but he also does like, like essentially fine art with it. You know, we've got a lot of character based artists, we've got a lot of like, well, Zyna is like king of letters. There's, there's like a really good marriage of different things from graph. It's not just like, we only do letters in Birmingham, it's like we do, you've got Fuck a Wolf on pay slips, you've got like, Jen doing big ass characters, and it's, it's just, you know, it's healthy to have all those things come together. It's very versatile, mm. isn't it, nowadays? Yeah. And it One. seems to be, sorry to cut you off there, it seems to be like, you can pretty much get away with doing it anywhere now. Like, all the canals, you've got all the, um, the arches and all that. you got Silly Oak Park, has just been even more revamped now. They've got the skate park there. It's even more, you can go there and just paint. It's great. With all the legal spaces then, what kind of rules do you follow yourself when you're out there on the street? So generally, when I'm there, if like, say for instance, there's uh, a piece up, if I know the person, I'll message them before or I'll like talk to them about it, but the general go-to with legal areas, it's, it's legal, play ball, just do it. Uh, I've spoke to writers before, like when I first started about a year ago, when I first started picking up cans, I'd be really worried, because I've obviously heard horror stories from the 80s where it's like people get hanged by their ankles and stuff for a space. And it's just not like that anymore. There's like, there's little bits of like tit for tat, but it's like, oh, you didn't put me up after. It's like, oh, sorry, I will do next time though. Now I know the rule, do you know what I mean? And like, I'd go to Selly Park and I'd see like an house piece and I'd be like, oh, mate, do you mind if I go over this? And you'd be like, do it, man, it's Selly Park. And then now I've kind of got that and I've took that and I've been like, right, cool, and Selly, you can just do your own thing. And had I not had that, I would have had no can practice before last year's high -vis. And now I've had a load more because I'm a bit more confident to go to like the canals, say for instance, and just put a character up. Because I know at some point someone else is going to take me out, but I'm not. See, I don't even think of it as like a taking out. It's just the, the next layer on top. You can't be too precious, I suppose. In no. The video, no, 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 no. One last question then. Where can people find you online? What's your social media so, presence? My main presence is on Instagram. Uh, that's just ginger underscore Dan. Um, you can find me in the real world. I work at CasArt. Come say hello. I'll talk to you about cans if you like or whatever, really, to or be honest poscas. with you. Or Poscas. I love Poscas. Um, yeah, uh, mainly just ginger down on Instagram. Thank you. All the best. No worries.